Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Mid-Level Media channel, your hub for everything physical media and entertainment. I am Ken. Today, guys, I am doing this video primarily to review the Howling 2 um, on 4K, which I got, I think, a couple of weeks ago and I watched it over a week ago, but I do want to talk about this 4K. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video primarily, but also I'm going to use this video to show off a couple other Vinegar Syndrome pickups that I got with the Howling 2 because it's interesting I only remember ordering the Howling 2. So when these other two things came in, I had to like struggle to remember like why I ordered these. But then I remembered, I think this was a part of the Labor Day sale and a couple of these items were pretty cheap. So I just went ahead and added them on um, to my Howling 2 order. But yeah, we're going to be talking about the Howling 2 on 4K today, guys, as well as my other pickups. If you haven't yet hit the subscribe button, please hit the subscribe button. We talk about physical media on this channel, Blu-rays, 4Ks, Owning the movies that you love, all that stuff there behind me every single day. So if you like that kind of stuff, hit the subscribe button. Also, leave me a comment down below. What's your thoughts on the Howling 2? Is this one of your favorite Howling movies? Um, do you like it better than the original? I don't know if there's a lot of people that have that opinion. Let me know um, in the comments section below. And yeah, turn on bell notifications for all future videos. So just getting into uh, this movie... I have seen, I'm pretty sure, I have vivid memories of renting the entire Howling franchise, at least the first six back when I was a kid. I remember renting all these and getting them off the video store shelves. I remember almost nothing about them. Even the first one, which I watched uh, again for the first time since I was a kid, like, I don't know, seven or eight years ago. And I like remembered nothing from when I was a kid. Uh, but I know I watched the first one when I was a kid. I know I watched this one. I just have very little memory. Um, of these movies. The Howling is, of course, an all-time werewolf movie classic. It came out the same year as American Werewolf in London. There's always a debate which one's better, The Howling, American Werewolf in London. They both have fantastic transformation sequences that are very different in their own right, but I always tend to go American Werewolf in London. That's just one of my favorite movies, horror movies of all time. I think it's fantastic, but I really enjoy The Howling. This one, The Howling 2, this is interesting because I feel like it's one that people um, like to dismiss as just being kind of a shitty like horror sequel. But I watched this and I'll be damned if I didn't think it was actually a good horror movie. There's some weird, um, goofy aspects about it or just strange things that this movie does. Um, and the director of this film, I'm trying to remember his name. He has a fantastic special feature here, which we'll get into. Uh, Felipe Mora who maybe I've seen another film of his, maybe I haven't, I didn't really look up his filmography, but he just has a way with his directing. This this movie felt kind of like an old school, like gothic horror movie, and I think it has that feel because Christopher Lee is in the film, but it also felt like a schlocky, like straight to video, like 80s horror movie as well. And those two like melded together, just created a very like interesting horror experience for me. I like this movie a lot. I really did. I'm not going to say it's better than the original Howling, but I will ask that you go back and watch the original Howling. Like, to me, that movie isn't a masterpiece. Like, there are great things about it, but as far as the way the story's told and the performances, like, that movie's not necessarily what I would call, like, a traditionally, like, great movie either. Um, it's very campy. It's kind of tongue-in-cheek in nature as well. But The Howling 2, like, to me was really just a lot of fun. Like, I enjoyed this a lot. I enjoyed seeing Christopher Lee because you watch a lot of these older Christopher Lee films and he more or less plays, like, the villain in a lot of the movies. Like, I'm thinking of The Wicker Man and, you know, he plays Dracula a lot in a lot of these older films. And um, I, there was one I just watched recently. It was a Jess Franco movie where he's kind of the villain in that as well. And he just kind of he's just kind of a natural villain. The first movie that I saw him in as the villain was Gremlins 2. And then, of course, Lord of the Rings, he's in that as the villain as well. He just plays a natural villain. But in this movie, when I'm watching him, I'm like, he kind of plays a natural good guy as well. He kind of plays like a Van Helsing type character. I like the two leads um, as well. Uh, the two like lead characters who kind of have a little romance of their own. The one um, has his, his sister who is supposed to be Dee Wallace from the first one, um, which she dies. She dies on air. That's at the end of The Howling. And they kind of show that again, but they they kind of like work around like because D. Wallace, I guess they couldn't get back to do this movie, but it's supposed to be the D. Wallace character that dies and she's a werewolf. Obviously, that's what she turns into at the end of the first movie. That's where you get the line, your sister's a werewolf, which is the sub tag of this movie um, that Christopher Lee says to his character at the beginning of the film. So the movie starts off at the sister's funeral and then Christopher Lee comes in and explains to the brother and also the news reporter 
who was her friend as well, explains to them that, you know, his sister was a werewolf, but there's still a head werewolf out there by the name of Sturba, and they got to go take her out before she spreads the werewolf curse further um, in the world. So that's kind of where the movie starts, and then that kind of leads us into the expedition, the adventure if you will, to go to the werewolf layer to take the take out the the werewolf army that's building underneath Sturba. So the movie does really feel kind of like an adventure type movie. And the person that plays Sturba, the woman that plays Sturba, is Sybil Danning. And a lot of people will talk about this movie kind of being known for just how incredible she looks in this movie as Sturba. And I will agree, she does look pretty amazing in her like tight leather getup, like when she's actually like Sybil Danning and not like a uh, a person that's hairy like running around or the older version of herself. She does look amazing, and in 4K it looks even better, which we'll get into that. It's a fun movie. It's just a fun horror movie. There are some quirky aspects about it, but I don't know. Like when I'm watching it, like I hear people saying this is a bad movie, and I I. I It has quirky aspects. It's not like a great film. I'm not going to call it an all-time classic. But when I was watching it, I don't know. I was just into it. I was taking it seriously. And I was like fully engaged into it. And I was having a good time. And I was like, I don't know how people can think this is a bad movie. It's not like one of the greatest films ever made. But it's certainly not a bad movie. And I I enjoyed my time um, with The Howling 2, Your Sister's a Werewolf. There's some good like, you know, kill sequences. And the special effects we'll get into are difference there's nothing as great as like the transformation scene and it's seen in the first one in this uh this has a quirky aspect when it comes to the costumes and stuff which again we'll get into in a second but i don't know i just i i think that christopher lee brings a lot of um weight to this film he brings a lot of prestige just being in the movie he brings a lot of credibility to the film just with him and his performance And he's actually in the movie a lot. Like he's in the movie like from the opening pretty much to the very end. Now get into the actual uh, 4K restoration here from Vinegar Syndrome. This is a 4K from the original camera negative. It's got Dolby Vision. It's got HDR10. Guys, if you've ever seen a 4K from Vinegar Syndrome, it really is kind of a different experience than what everybody else is doing. I think Arrow is, is pretty much there as well with what they do. It's pretty on par with Vinegar Syndrome, but... Vinegar Syndrome, at times when I'm watching their 4Ks, really feel like they're in a league of their own when it comes to these more classic uh, 4K restorations, especially like in the uh, niche that they operate in with like 70s, 80s, 90s, like cult horror films. It just feels like they are a step above like everybody else because this is a movie that it got a Blu-ray from Screen Factory back in the day, and I don't have the Blu-ray. I don't know what the Blu-ray looks like. I can't really compare the two, but... I'm watching this 4K and I am just in awe of this 4K. I'm like, this movie, I remember watching on VHS when I was a kid, but it's like, again, I don't remember much, but I'm like, damn, like this just looks so incredible. And sometimes when a 4K looks really good, you can overlook some of the weaker aspects of the film. And it's like, even if the movie's not great, it's like a great 4K and a great 4K experience can sometimes enhance like your thoughts on the movie. And I feel like that's kind of what happened here with me, but the 4K here is really an immaculate presentation. It is amazing, like pretty much from beginning to end. There's not really a flaw in here. I think it's one of one of the most perfect like Vinegar Syndrome 4Ks that they've ever done. Like Amityville's fantastic, From Beyond's fantastic. I would put this up against those. Um, for sure. Like the visual appeal in this film is fantastic. Like I said, it takes place in Transylvania. You got castles, like the set design is just amazing. Like inside the actual like castle itself, just how it's lit and stuff. All that stuff looks amazing. Everybody's standing around the werewolves and everything, just the hallways, the corridors of the castle. All that stuff looks great. There's some great, just like visual, like set design all throughout the film. There's some incredible colors that look so incredibly um, fantastic in 4k with that HDR. And I just thought this looked amazing, just amazing from beginning to end. And really just highlights how much like vinegar syndrome cares, like how much care they put into this stuff. You're not seeing this level of restoration work done from most of these studios guys. You're just not. And even a lot of the boutique labels, like I think screen factors come a long way. Arrow video obviously does great work. Second site does great work as well. But Second Sight, to be honest, like feels like they focus more on like newer films nowadays, and they do great with those. But 
Like these older movies that haven't been touched in years, like Vinegar Syndrome is really going in there and just getting into the nitty gritty and just cleaning these movies up on a level that just, it feels like nobody else is doing. And this is such a pristine presentation, so much incredible detail throughout. But it also, like they don't clean it up, like they're not scrubbing the grain out of it. Like it still feels so filmic, so natural. I don't know how Vinegar Syndrome does it. And like everybody, like I said, will do it as well. But they just make it like feel like so filmic still, like such like still like an actual film, but it's so cleaned up as well. It's like they do both of them like at the same time. It just looks like a really cleaned up, like grainy um, picture. And it just looks amazing. And I thought the Howling 2 is just one of the best 4Ks that they've ever done. Um, I just thought it was so fantastic. Now, let's get into um, the audio here. I don't think they did any kind of upgrades with the audio. You got the English mono track and that's pretty much it. But I don't really think you need an audio upgrade with this. I do like the uh, the pale, what is it? The pale, pale light of the moon glow or something like that. That song is, is pretty fantastic. They play it in the beginning and then they play it at the end in the end credit scene, which is freaking wild. That whole like end credit, um, you know, montage that they do at the end with that song is freaking wild. It is wild. Sybil Danny rips her top off like 25 times in that ending, um, it, which he does it in the movie, but they just do it over and over again to like the beat of the music. It's very odd, but it was fantastic. And I was just drawn into the entirety of that. Um, so it's a really good soundtrack. And um, I thought the sound was great. The mono track is fine. Getting into the actual uh, packaging right here. I think this artwork is also one of the best like pieces of art that Vinegar Syndrome has ever done on a release. I just think this is freaking fantastic. Uh, she was great in the movie as well. But um, taking it out of the slipcover, this is the original poster for The Howling 2. I have it flipped. This is the reversible artwork. And then you can look at the back right there and you got the synopsis and you got all kinds of good special features as well. You got more details at the bottom, the specs. You open this up and you do get a nice little booklet on the inside. And I got to be careful before I show this stuff. There are... Um, werewolf orgies kind of in this movie so i don't want to i don't want to i want to make sure i don't show that stuff but there's a there's an image of sybil danning in this movie like think about that in 4k like it's it's just incredible guys just incredible um this is the disc art you do get the blu-ray and you get the 4k now the blu-ray does have all the special features which we'll get into in a second and let me go ahead and flip the reversible cover art because i do want to show this off and it's just the it's the same artwork, but it is reversible. So um, great stuff. I, I love the packaging. You know, they could have done like a hard box release like TCM2 or something or or something a little bit more extravagant. But I think this helps kind of keep the cost down a little bit for this. This is $37.50 on the Vinegar Syndrome website. There are still editions available uh, with the slipcover. Now, it will probably be available on Amazon at some point, but you're probably not going to get the slipcover or you won't get the slipcover. Uh, for it when it's on Amazon. So I'll link the Vinegar Syndrome website down below if you're interested um, in getting this title. Now getting into the special features, guys, incredible. And they included all the special features that were on um, the Screen Factor release, which I think is an interview with Sybil Danning as well. But what Vinegar Syndrome adds here um, to this release is uh, you have a brand new audio commentary track with the director, Felipe Mora, and author screenwriter, Kelly Goodner, um, you also have an archival commentary track with a director. You have another archival commentary track with composer Steve Parsons and editor Charles B Bornstein. Um, so that's three audio commentaries here. You have, let's see, Lights, Camera, Werewolves, uh, a conversation with director Felipe Mora and filmmaker Michael Mohan. So I've talked about Michael Mohan before on this channel. He directed the recent horror film Immaculate, but he's also a big time like fan of physical media and these boutique labels. He's been on the Severin Closet um, video on the Severin Films channel before. So he's a big physical media collector. He's into this stuff. I thought it was so awesome and such a surprise because I didn't know like he was on this release. But he basically moderates an interview with the director. It's a 40-minute long conversation where Michael's just kind of geeking out over meeting this guy because he's a big fan of him. And they're talking about The Howling 2. And it is such a great, like, energetic interview and it's a breath of fresh air to be honest because you don't get that kind of stuff all the time usually you'll just get the interviews with the person talking and you don't really like see like who's talking with them 
But this is just a conversation between a guy that's a fan, Michael Mohan, who's also a filmmaker, and another filmmaker from the 80s that made all kinds of great genre films. And they're just kind of talking about the genre. They're kind of talking about the film. They're talking about everything that went into the film. There's a really like great story uh, with the director, how he talks about how the studio sent them monkey costumes instead of werewolf costumes to do the movie with. So they didn't have the werewolf uh, makeup and costumes and effects and all that stuff to work with. They had monkey suits. And he basically said, I can't do a werewolf movie with monkey suits. And the studio was like, you got to make it work because this is all you, this is all we got. Um, so he had to make it work. And it was really like interesting how he made that work. He basically had Christopher Lee say a line in the film that kind of explained the transformation. Like it goes through like different animals before you get to the actual werewolf. And that does explain a lot with the movie because a lot of the werewolves in this movie, like they're they're upright, like they're standing up and they do like if you go back and watch it after having that context, they do kind of look like monkeys. Like they did a lot to kind of transition them and help them look a little bit more werewolfish. Um, but that, that was a really cool story that they kind of get into in the special features. There's also, um, a romp through Czechoslovakia, an interview with actress Annie McEnroe, uh, who's the girl in this movie. And I thought that was a great interview as well because she hadn't seen this movie or really, uh, and you can tell she hadn't seen or thought about this film since it came out. So, and, and I think Vinegar Syndrome like screened this movie for everybody that came back to talk about it. And she talks about like watching the movie for the first time in like 40 years. You also got Thrown to the Wolves, an interview with special makeup effects artist Steve Johnson, who goes into the whole monkey suit thing and story and what he had to work with. So that's really cool. A life collaboration with Felipe Mora, an interview with Pamela Cross, Felipe, Felipe Mora's wife and artist, artist consultant, Freaky Sexy Mad, an interview with composer Stephen Parsons. And then you got Lord of the Stricken Fields. Film historian Jonathan Rigby on Christopher Lee and The Howling 2, Your Sister is a Werewolf. So that's kind of a film essay on Christopher Lee and, and hit the movies that he was doing and also how that led into this film. Um, and then you got to all the uh, the past archival stuff as well, the interview with uh, Sybil Danny. So at the end of the day, guys, I really think that The Howling 2, Your Sister is a Werewolf on 4K from Vinegar Syndrome is a great release. The features are fantastic. The restoration is just phenomenal. Like Vinegar Syndrome really does give you your money's worth. I mean, you can say what you want about the movies themselves, you know, varying degrees of quality. I mean, film subjective, everybody likes different kinds of stuff, guys. The work they put into these movies, you can't deny it. You can't deny it. It's undeniable. So I think The Howling 2 is a fantastic release. And if I'm being completely honest, I think it's one of the best 4K releases of the year uh, from any studio, from any label. So yeah, that's The Howling 2, Your Sister's a Werewolf. Let's get into some of my other pickups. I did go ahead and get Demon Wind. This has been on my radar for a long time. I know it had a cool ass lenticular slip cover uh, when it first came out, but I just got the standard Blu-ray. I've heard some really good things about this one. So I decided to pull the trigger on it because... I think it was like 13 or 14 bucks in the sale. Um, and I think this has some really great features as well. And like I said, it's got a really cool lenticular cover. I doubt I'll ever get it because it's going for big money on eBay. But it's a it's a cool release, guys. And I'm excited to uh, to check this one out. You got a, I think you got a DVD and you got a Blu-ray on the inside. And I was going to flip the, the cover art. It kind of looks similar. The reversible cover art but pretty damn cool. So yeah, Demon Wind, definitely gonna check that one out at some point. I also went ahead and got this because when this came out, it was 80 bucks and it went down to 20 and I just love this movie so much. And I doubt I'll ever read the comics. Maybe I will at some point, but I did get this the zombie uh, comic book collection and they re-released this and it was like 80 bucks when it came out. It sold out and they re-released it and yeah, they, they brought it down to 20 bucks during the sale. So I was like, I can't pass on that. Am I going to get the other ones that they do? Probably not. You know, I like Maniac. Okay. But not enough to get a booklet set, but zombie I love. And I just, from a, an aesthetic standpoint, I just kind of wanted to th this in the collection and on the shelf. Um, like I said, I'll fully admit right now, I probably won't read this at least not, of, not as of right now, I'm going to leave this in the packaging right here, but I did think that this was cool enough. But there you have it, guys. That's this month's pickups from Vinegar Syndrome. Your sister is a werewolf. The Howling 2 uh, 4K review. Thank you all so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, turn on bell notifications for all future videos. And we'll see you next time.